All right, hello. We are going to learn about static and non-static um, variables and methods. Uh, just what does that static modifier finally mean? We're gonna finally talk about that. Before we get into the main lesson, I have a review question. We're talking about object and classes. And so I just wanna see, to help you try to understand this concept better, I have six different things here. And you have to determine if that statement is related more to classes or more to objects, right? So pause the video, try each of these before seeing the answers. Okay, so this is sort of like the blueprint. It defines what data and behavior we're going to have for the object. So that is the class, right? You make a class that says, hey, what instance variables do I want to have? What methods do I want to have? Um, stores the data information about one specific object, that is an object. Okay, so like once you have a class, like let's say you're making a class called student, when you populate it with the student's name and grade and address and everything, that becomes an object. Uh, you create only one, that's a class. You create multiple instances, so you only make one blueprint, and then instances are the objects. Right, so you can have like one blueprint for a house, but you can actually make multiple houses from that one blueprint. Right, so the multiple instances are the objects and the class is the one. You access the data through dot methods. Um, do, do, do. So that would be an object. So once you create the object to access the data, you do object name dot method name. And then if you have any input parameters, you pass them in. Right, so once you create the object, that's how you access the methods. Okay, defines what methods are possible for the type of object. That's a class. So the class says, hey, how, what methods and data do we want to have? How do we want to, what, like, what do we want to be able to do once we have objects? What do we want to do? We want to be able to, like, add to their score? Do we want to change their address? Do we want to have them go on a date? Whatever it is. Um, you put that in the class, you define what you want to be able to do with your objects, right? So the class says what methods and what data do you want to have? Okay, and just here's another one more picture of classes versus objects is we created a superhero.java class, a blueprint, and then we did another program with a main method where you did this code where each time you do that new keyword, you make a new instance of that class. So here uh, I have a superhero class and then I'm making a Wonder Woman that is a superhero populated with this data. And then I'm making Superman populated with other data and then I'm making Batman populated with other data. So I sort of have three different variables here, each with their own set of data, their own name, power, and age. Okay, and the data I want to track for each superhero, that's what's defined in my class. But you have just one of those and then multiple possible. You could have as many heroes as you want. Okay, so that's it for our review. And um, we are going to do learn what static means, finally understand what that means, hopefully. So our goal is really just to understand what the heck that static means. Um, you might have to program with it a little bit. I have seen it on free response questions on the AP test. Um, and it's a pretty advanced topic. Okay, so I'm actually going to post a separate video out on Schoology that, that goes over this again and in, in from a different teacher's perspective. So if you want to watch that, that's optional for you. Because um, this is a pretty advanced, pretty tricky concept. Okay, so static is just a modifier word, much like you might have final or um, what's another modifier? Um, public is a modifier, right? Like public or private. Um, so what static is, a static method or variable is a method or variable associated with the class, not any specific object, okay? Um, and that'll make more sense uh, as we go through some examples. Uh, but normally your objects have data and your class doesn't. Your class just is the blueprint. But if you do want your class to have data, then it would be static data. Okay, and a non-static method or variable is what we've done most for the most part so far. And these are um, our methods, methods or variables associated with a specific object, specific instance maybe of, or specific instance slash object, I guess. 
So it's like one specific um, creation of, of the class. Once you make an instance of that class, it has its own data, and that would all be non-static data. Okay, so um, to try to give you a visual of this, um, this is something I found from some book or whatever, is if I had a human class where they had their name, their date of birth, their height, all right, all of those would be examples of non-static. Those would be all non-static, okay? And the reason is for each human object, they have their own name, date of birth, and height, right? Each, here's two different human objects. We got Albert Einstein and David Bowie, okay? And so those, they all have their own data. Each object has its own data. That's non-static, okay? But you could also imagine a scenario where we wanted to track all the humans on Earth. Right, basically the population of the Earth. Okay, so in that case, we could make a static variable called population. Okay, and that would actually be stored in the class. Right, so this is just a picture of the idea that a static variable is a class level variable. Right, each human doesn't have a population. Right, each human object doesn't have a population, but the class might that tracks how many total human objects have been created. Okay, so that would be example of static because there's only one variable. Right here we have a couple different heights, one for David Bowie and one for Albert Einstein, right? But the population is only one variable. Okay, so that's that's what static means. It's it's a class level variable. All right, and there is literally just one of them in memory, right? Technically both of these objects can still have access to this population. Right, because they are a uh, specific, they are a human object. They still have access to it, but there's only one. It's stored at the class level, and any human object can still access it. But there's just one of them stored uh, at the uh, class level. Okay, so I'm going to try to do this with an example. All right, so basically, I'm going to make a fan club. Right, you you may not believe this because I'm such a boring teacher. My jokes are terrible, but I do actually have a fan club. Right, so I'm going to have a, a fan class. All right, in fact, I can show it to you right here. Okay, so here's my fan class. And I'm going to have two regular, so these would be the non-static variables. Right, they're going to be different for each object. And then I'm going to have one static variable that tracks the total number of fans that I have. All right, and I'm actually, so these you don't initialize, right? The non-static you don't initialize because you initialize those in the constructor or constructors. Okay, so those get initialized when I construct an object, a fan object. But num fans, I'm going to initialize right away and say that's going to be zero. And then each time we create a new fan, I do plus plus num fans. Right, so that it just tracks how many total fans I have. All right. So just to give you another picture of that, um, once I start to create some fans, right, so initially num fans will be zero, but then if I make one fan, a Natalie Portman fan, then that variable, right, again, it's stored up here in the class. I should put this actually up here by the class, right? Um, then once I create Natalie Portman, num fans will be one, okay? And then when I create Taylor Swift fan over here, that'll have its own first and last name, but that num fans variable will just change now to be two because I've made two fan uh, objects, okay? All right, um, so I'm going to go over here to my fan club, okay? And one of the, the other differences about static variables is normally to access the methods and data in here i have to make an object first okay so to to do like get first name or something i have to make the object first so i can do like and uh natalie equals new fan and i'm going to pass in the first name and last name Okay, and then I could like print out her name, like natalie.get first name. Okay, so normally when you access a method, um, a regular method, you have to call it like that, method or data.
okay? But with a static one, you don't have to create an object first, all right? Because static methods and data is not associated with the object, it's associated with the class. So you can actually just access them, right? So I'll type this out here, access, non, no, access, static, data, slash, method. You can just do it like this. You can just do fan. Basically, you do class name dot method or whatever the data is. Okay, down here I was doing object name dot method name. All right, that's what I did for this get first name. But for here, for the number of fans, I can just do fan dot num fans, right? Because it's static, I can just access it without ever having to create an instance of the object. Okay, so I'm just going to print it out, right? I'm going to do fan dot num fans. And if I run it, it's going to print out that there's zero fans at this point. Okay, and then after I create the Natalie, right, um, that will actually change the number of fans. So I'm going to print that out down here. And uh, num fans, right? And so that'll have changed because anytime I do the constructor, it changes the class variable num fans and it'll increase it by one. So now I have one fan here. Okay. And similarly, if I create a, another fan in here, if I do fan like Taylor Swift, it's a big fan of mine, equals new fan Taylor and Swift. Okay, so once I create that fan object, again, each time a fan is created, it does plus plus to that static variable, right? So at this point, after I've created two fans now, I'm gonna get rid of this call here. I'm not gonna do this anymore. That was just to show you how you call a non-static method. Okay, so now we have two fans. And one of the weird parts of this is this num fans is stored at the class, which is why I'm doing class, class name dot num fans. But any fan object also has access to this. Okay, so a similar way, if I do sys out here, I could also just use any one of my objects. I could do Taylor dot num fans, right? That's the same variable. And I could do Natalie dot num fans. Okay, so that's kind of unconventional to do it that way because it's a class variable, but technically they all are the same spot in memory. It's the same num fans variable, which is going to be two at this point. Okay, so you can kind of access them either way, but generally you're going to do class name. Okay, um, and this is also true. So that's a, a, an example of a static variable. Right, but you can also make static methods. Okay, so in my fan class, I have a regular get first name, get last name, which are non static methods. Okay, but if I put the static modifier on there, um, that is no longer associated with any object. Okay, even though my objects can do this worship method, they don't have any data, they don't use these, these instance variables. Right, because this method is not associated with any particular object. Okay, so basically what happens here is because it is static, right, I can call without creating a instance. I can do fan.worship, right, whenever I want, and that'll run it even though I haven't made a fan object yet. Right, I don't make a fan object till down here. Right, because it's associated with the class, I can just call that whenever I want. All right, and please note that Natalie and Taylor can still call that method too, but you don't actually need to make an object. For a regular method you do, to call get last name, right? So if I try to do fan.get last name, it's not gonna work, right? And if you think about it, it doesn't make any sense because fan class doesn't have a last name, only a fan object has a last name, all right? So that's the biggest thing is to think of of a class as something uh, as static as something associated with a class versus non-static is associated with a specific object. All right, that is it. Thank you for watching.